Hey friend, today I want to talk a little bit about UX writing and content copy in your designs. Now, if you're lucky enough, maybe you work in an organization that has dedicated UX writers that you can work with. That's what I have at Uber. But for smaller companies or more independent teams, maybe you don't have a dedicated UX writer or content strategist on your team, which means that as the product designer, you might be responsible for actually coming up with the content in your designs. Recently, I stumbled across a new tool called Ditto and it's completely built for UX writing and content in product design and I've given it a little spin but I thought maybe we could give it a try together and I can walk through a little bit how it works its basic features and if you're a designer that's looking to improve your UX writing or content strategy process then this tool might be the one for you so let's check it out so Ditto does integrate with Figma so if you're a sketch user it's time to switch over but really the tool tool is all about collaborating on copy. You can kind of think about it, I guess, as like a design system, but for writing. It seems like you can actually like create content components. So if you're using like a submit button in multiple places throughout your product, then you could turn that content into a component so that if you updated it in one place, that copy would update everywhere else in your design, which sounds like a really great way to keep your writing consistent. So taking a look at their website, it looks like they have support for edit history. So you can actually see who made edits to copy. They also have statuses so you can quickly know if copy is still in progress or in review or complete. And then again, like I mentioned, they, they have you know, some tools for consistency, like components and being able to see all of your content in one view, which is awesome. And of course, like it's collaborative because it's in the cloud. So yeah, in general, like I, I stumbled upon this and I was really excited. They have a Figma plugin, which I have installed. So let's now go and give it a go and I'll show you a little bit how it actually works. So here in Figma, I have one screen that I've just put in, but let's say you had your whole design file here. Um, this is a page within Restaurant Manager that our restaurants can use to create different marketing campaigns. So I've got that screen here, and now let's say it's ready for like a UX writer to come in and do their content magic. All you wanna do is you want to open up the Ditto plugin, and essentially what it's first gonna ask you to do, assuming you've already like created your account and things like that, is you need to connect this file to Ditto by putting in the share link of this Figma file. So I'm gonna paste that in here, connect, and it's gonna import this file into Ditto on the web. Um, but most of the work you're actually gonna do here in Figma via the plugin, you don't have to go away to the web. The web is more, I'll show you in a minute, but it's more of like a complete library or a complete overview of all of the content. But if we're sort of still working on the content, we wanna do most of that here in Figma. So now let's say I wanted to edit some of this copy. I can go over to edit here to actually work on the copy and it's gonna ask me to select a text box, surprise, surprise. So let's say I wanted to edit this select button here. Uh, maybe I wanted to change this text to begin uh, and let's give it a status of, let's say work in progress because I'm not confident. You can add any notes here. So I don't know, maybe you want to say like still exploring different options and then you can add a tag here as well, um, which just becomes really handy when it comes to search. If you wanted to really, uh, you know, search for different components or different content strings you know like i might give this a tag of like button for example so that if somebody wanted to search for all the buttons or like maybe cta they could search that term and then this design uh this like text would come up i suppose so then i can save those edits and that will save there and now if we go over to activity, it kind of has this log of changes that have been made. So you can actually see that I changed this button from select to begin. So you can see the actual content that was changed and you can also see the status that I marked it as. So now if we head on over to the web, you can see an aggregate of all of the different content strings from this design. And you can see here that because begin was actually a component, it has applied those changes across all of those begin buttons in my designs. So you can also see the red line here, which is indicating that it's work in progress and that like all of those different buttons have been updated to have the same tags and also the same content. Uh, if I wanted to, I could change this status to in review and it would 
uh, update them to in review. So you can kind of uh, globally, almost at a component level, make status updates and changes to content, which is really, really exciting. Now in here, you can also create new content components. So if I go back to my design for a moment, you can see I have this sidebar navigation on the side and the content on this should be consistent across all the different pages, right? Like if I visited payments, then it should stay named payments, for example. Um, so, you know, this is a good opportunity to maybe create a component here so that if I changed menu here in this design, that would kind of be consistently changed elsewhere as well. So in this case, if I selected um, menu here, let's say I wanted to create a component and call it menu create here, and that's turned that content string into a new component. So now that I've actually turned menu into a content component, if I had more of these screens in my designs, let's say I had a screen that was actually the menu uh, and I kind of synced this back to ditto. Let's give that a go. Now you can see we have, you know, another set of content here to represent the second page. And here I'm going to select menu and actually attach it to the menu component. If we go back into Figma, let's say here I change this from menu to, I don't know, let's say store and I saved those changes. Wow, did you see that? It also changed it over here on the screen. So I think that is such an awesome and powerful way to keep your content and your copy consistent across all of the screens in your design. Often what happens, what I end up doing is I would then have had to like manually copy and paste this over to get the new copy in or like manually type store in here. So this is a really nice way to keep your content and copy consistent and up to date by turning them into actual content components, which I think is really powerful. So that's kind of the basics of how Ditto works. They are still in beta at the moment, so they're still making a lot of changes and a lot of improvements. If we come back over to the web, just to kind of show you what this version looks like, you have your projects here where you can import a new Figma file. There's the search functionality, like I mentioned earlier, and then also a place to kind of manage and store your text components. All in all, I'm pretty excited to see tools like these that are actually integrating more into the existing Figma workflow and thinking about other design verticals like content or like research. They're all important parts of the design process and whether you know you as a designer are responsible for those parts or maybe you work with a, a peer or a colleague that is responsible for those, we all have to work together and collaborate together. And what I like about Figma is that we're using it a lot as a source of truth these days. And so having to link out to like copy docs and like research presentations and other tools is like becoming quite burdensome. So I love the direction of a tool like this where it's kind of all integrated into Figma and you don't have to keep clicking out and going into other tools just to get the work done. If you're interested in going deeper and maybe you want some one-on-one -on -one help or some mentoring on how to integrate UX writing or content strategy into your design process, you can always book time with me over on Superpeer and for 30 minutes we can chat one-on-one. -on -one. All right, friend, see you in another video next time. Have a great week. See you later.